I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Cipher. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about SAS mix-ins, JavaScript coding, Git tips, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have eight SAS mix-ins that you should include in your toolbox. Let's check them out. This is a pretty cool blog post with eight different SAS mix-ins that are pretty handy. This first one is to set a rem font size with pixel fallback. So for example, if a browser does not support the rem unit, you can fall back to pixels. So it'll output code that looks something like this. And if rems are not available in the browser, it will fall back to this pixels. Uh, pixel unit here. Is that uh, is that rem attribute in the in the side of the box there in the corner? Rem in the corner, in the spotlight. I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> next up is uh, an SVG background images with PNG fallback. Uh, so, for example, if a browser does not support SVGs, you could fall back to ping images, and it will do a retina image depending on the pixel density of the screen. So there's a whole bunch of other tips here, a pretty cool blog post, and I highly recommend you check it out. Next up, Firefox 27 has been released. We've been known to cover new browser releases here on the show, kind of like we're doing right now. You, you folks are all witnessing history. So what's new in Firefox 27? Well, the thing that most developers and watchers of the Treehouse show would care about is some new ECMA 6 script compatibility. So there are new support for ECMAScript 6 generators. That is a very difficult word to say. Uh, also, there is support for the new mathematical function math.hypot. Uh, next up, there is support for the SPDY 3.1 protocol. I know you've all been waiting to use that. Oh, finally. I know. And also, you can choose to deobfuscate JavaScript in the debugger. This is going to be pretty useful if you're trying to see how certain websites uh, write their JavaScript if they've used a minifier or something like that when coding. Anyway, definitely check it out. If you have the desktop version of Firefox, it should update automatically next time you launch it. Very nice. Well, getting back to SAS, we have another blog post about mix-ins versus placeholders. Hmm. So a mix-in is basically a piece of code that allows you to write, well, a mix-in or kind of a function that looks like this. So you have a set of CSS rules, and then you can use that mix-in in other places. So you can expand those out, and they'll get processed by SAS. It would be great if CSS supported that by default. It would. It would be wonderful. But fortunately, we have all these CSS preprocessors to fill in the gap. Then there's placeholders. Now, placeholders look like they're almost the same thing. You have a placeholder here, which you would you know, write out your CSS rules, and then you would go ahead and use the placeholder uh, in your SAS elsewhere. So what's the difference? Well, a mix-in is just going to include the code uh, just like you would expect. It's just going to repeat this code, and it can also do some fancy things with variables. It can take in arguments and go ahead and process those in various ways. A placeholder can be extended, though, and that's what separates it from a mix-in. So, for example, if you wanted to write out a style rule and wanted to include styles from a placeholder, you could add those in, and then you can add your styles on top of that. So you can kind of mix them together and uh, mix and match them. So it's Pretty cool. That's not exactly uh, everything that there is to know about it. So definitely be sure to check out this post because it does go into quite a bit of detail. It's pretty cool. It also has a joke like we would have on the Treehouse Show where it has a section called Mixing It Up. Oh. Uh, get it? I do get it. Because they're talking about mix ins. Yeah. Hmm. That's a joke. Next up, we have a very long article on the Mozilla Developer Network called A Reintroduction to JavaScript. I have a feeling you're going to summarize it for us. No, I'm going to read this whole thing word for word. This is going to be a very slightly longer and more interesting version of what we normally have Excited. on the Treehouse Show. 
Uh, no, so this is everything you would expect from an introduction to JavaScript or a reintroduction. So they summarize the history of the language and then go through the different types of JavaScript objects, how they work, numbers, strings, other types, variables, and if you notice my browser is crashing a little bit, but hey, that's what happens when you do a show live. Anyway, Next, I want to really take a look at this custom object section because it's really, really interesting and it goes through how to write custom objects and what happens when you add methods to objects and just a whole bunch of stuff. So they start with this make person function which returns an object of the first and last name of the person. Then they say, okay, this is how you do a full name for the person and they have another function for reversing the full name. They show you how it works and okay, great, it works, but it's pretty ugly. Oh no, what do we do? Well, we can iterate and make it a little bit better. So they rewrite the person function and again, it works, but it's just slightly more elegant. So they go through and they iterate on this whole person object, the creation of it, and even launch into the prototypes behind it. For this reason, I'd say it's a really, really valuable article to sit down and read and maybe you'll pick up on something that you haven't seen before about the JavaScript language. You'll be able to find this on our show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash gotreehouse, or search for us on iTunes at The Treehouse Show. Very nice. Well, if you've ever tried to add a share button to your site, you know that it can All the be time. a little bit cumbersome. You know, you need to add Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and maybe a few other social networks. And all of them have their own separate pieces of JavaScript, and sometimes they load in iframes, they take up a lot of space, they're hard to style. There's just all kinds of problems with these, and you're always, you know, Googling for them to just look up the latest one. Wouldn't it be great if that was, like, already done for you? Well, fortunately, Jason, there is a jQuery plugin called Share, and you can include it into your site, and it will pop up Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus, and I'm sure if you were clever enough, you could probably extend it as well to include other social networks. What does it look like? Well, here's the share button. Click on it. Boom, look at that. Boom. Just pops right up there. Wow, it's like we're at a party. Let's share everything. Bam. But uh, yeah, it, it's much better than including all the different share buttons because uh, it doesn't have all of that extra JavaScript and it's much easier to style than those custom buttons that come from the sites themselves. Yeah, I think what you would want to do is um, make that share button appear dynamically on your page whenever somebody tries to interact with anything. You know, oh, click this button. Nope. Why don't you share this first? Then we'll let you into the site. That's a really nice pattern. Yeah, I like that. Kind of love that. Maybe pop up a modal. Yeah. And then another modal. Like this page share. before you can see it. Okay, now post it on Twitter. Yeah, share it first and then and then read it and discover, yeah. oh my gosh, I've made a horrible mistake. Make a video of yourself reviewing this page favorably on Google+, and then you can see the content. I think we're done here. Yeah, we're, we're definitely on to something. Next up, over on the Ocranus blog, we have a post called Git Tips from the Trenches. This is, as you would expect, a summary of different Git tips that you can apply into your daily workflow to just make working with Git a little bit easier. So they've got some really great tips here. Check which branches are merged. Find anything in your entire Git history. See which branches have the latest commits. I'm not going to read all this to you. Just trust me that it is a great article and you should check it out. I trust you, Jason, but only a little bit. Next up is a pattern library from a list apart. A list apart, of course, is a very popular web blog. They post awesome articles about web design and development. They have a pattern library which basically shows all of the stylings for their site. So they have a section for swatches. So here's all the different colors they use on their site. Here's some typography. And then they have all of the different IDs and classes that they use throughout their site to kind of show what that styling will look like if you apply that particular piece of CSS. Now, you could go ahead and copy this kind of idea and maybe take your style sheet or, you know, your SAS style sheet and go ahead and create a list of all the different styles that you're using with an example. And that way, if you're working on a team, it makes it really easy to share what those different things are going to look like. So maybe somebody else wrote the styling and then you know another designer wants to go ahead and use it but they might not know exactly what to expect if they just 
use an H3 or an article element or something of that nature. So it's a really cool thing to have if you're working on a team, certainly. Yeah, definitely. That style guide is very, very useful. Mm -hmm. So that's about all we have time for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at NickRP. And I am at JCypher. For more information on anything we talk about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash treehouse. You can also subscribe to this show in iTunes, search for The Treehouse Show, and leave us a rating. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.